atrial fibrillation is an abnormal heart rhythm uh, where the top chambers of the heart are quivering rather than pumping and it can cause people to have symptoms, feel unwell, and it can increase your risk of stroke. So atrial fibrillation is when these top chambers of the heart are quivering rather than pumping. So people can get palpitation and an increased awareness of their heartbeat or they can get shortness of breath or exertional intolerance. Some people with atrial fibrillation will get chest pain um, when they have atrial fibrillation. That doesn't mean they're having a heart attack, but it can just be a symptom of atrial fibrillation. Rarely people will get lightheaded with the atrial fibrillation, but that's uh, the exception rather than the rule. Treatment of AF is, sort of has two sort of key things. The first thing is because the top chambers of the, uh, the heart, the atria, are quivering rather than pumping, that increases the likelihood of developing clot in those top chambers. Uh, so that's the, the, the first part of AF treatment is to reduce the risk of clot buildup that gives a risk of stroke, which is associated with atrial fibrillation. The second part of atrial fibrillation is controlling the symptoms that we've already spoken about and that can either be with medications or sometimes we opt to do procedures to actually cure the AF. Atrial fibrillation is a disease of ageing and we see it a lot more prevalently in the older population because the modifiable risk factors are quite a lot and the common theme is that it increases the, uh, the pressure and the stretch within the left holding chamber that can induce this AF and so these are things like diabetes, sleep apnea, heart failure, valve, valvular heart disease, uh, alcohol is a risk factor, as is obesity and uh, a sedentary lifestyle. I think the first port of call is uh, attending your GP and uh, having your GP check your pulse and perform an ECG. Uh, so through the Healthy Hearts Clinic at the Baker Institute, we're um, running a program of weight loss and exercise to see if we can reduce the incidence of onset AF and reduce the burden of AF in people who already have the disease and undergo AF ablation procedures. Uh, we've also got a program where we're targeting people uh, who have heavy alcohol intake and uh, we're randomising people to moderate their alcohol intake or not to see if that will reduce uh, the burden of AF.